Hi, I, um, my name is Tony O'Brien. I'm uh, the International Outreach Coordinator for the EFF, and um, this is a little talk that I was asked to give, just basically about um, hackers, laws, the EFF, the Bavarian Illuminati, and you. Um, so, uh, I guess we'll start. Oh, okay. I guess we'll start with the Bavarian Illuminati. Um, okay, I think these are the wrong slides. Hold on. <laughs> okay, I, ha I have two talks with this title, so, um, yeah, okay, um, I, I have actually two files about the very Illuminati, and that, that's, that's, um, that's, that's, that's not, that's not the public one. Okay, um, Thanks. Okay, good. All right. So um, I was asked to give a talk about hackers, laws, the EFF, and the Bavarian Illuminati. And um, uh, so uh, to take two of those slightly more public ones, um, the hackers and the EFF have actually, we've had a very long history between the two groups, um, very, a very close relationship both between the, the hacker subculture and the electronic, I mean, very close, in fact. That's, this, 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 this is where the EFF is, and this, this is where Noise Bridge is. So in the event of the bio fridge exploding and grey goo oozing out, this, this is your emergency exit. Right to the nearest lawyers who may be able to protect you from liability. So um, it's just down there. In fact, a really good project I feel would be one of those big inflatable yellow slides that they have in airplanes, and we could build it and you could do it. It would be fun. Um, um, for, for, for us, anyway. Okay, so um, AFF and the Bavarian Illuminati also a, a strong a, a connection um, since the founding of, I mean, not 1776, 1990, right, um, of the AFF. And this is why. Does everybody know the, the story of Steve Jackson Games? Hands up if you know Steve Jackson. Well, tough, because I've got two minutes to fill it. Um, so, so Thanks for not knowing about Steve Jackson Games. The story is, is that the uh, founding myth of the Electronic Frontier Foundation was um, a bunch of US um, Secret Service agents uh, raided one of the early bulletin boards, which was called Illuminoids, or Illuminati at Steve Jackson Games. And they seized it, and they seized all the emails and everything else, and they, they took it away with them. Um, and uh, uh, Electronic Foundation, Frontier Foundation was sort of formed because um, there's this little thing called the Fourth Amendment, which protects your documents. And so if you have a warrant that just says, hey, pick up everything that looks spooky and illuminoid, um, that doesn't actually cover an email server. Um, and one of the things they actually kept in the end was, um, was this, the, the prospective book for the role-playing game, GURPS Cyberpunk, which was a sort of hacking kind of themed role-playing game. And this was the quote from the, um, the, the Secret Service agent to astonished businessman Steve Jackson. He said, we're keeping this. It's obviously a manual for computer crime. So, um, uh, and this is one of the things, the things that, that really got people head up um, back in the 90s and led to the foundation, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. This is a great URL. You would kill for that URL. Um, so uh, the FF is kind of involved because, like I say, to protect bill, the Bill of Rights and to try and expand civil liberties into the um, electronic age. But I also want to try and convey, right? I want to try and convey how serious that error was by the Secret Service agent there. Because what he was doing is he was not confusing, like, normal hackers with, like, you know, the big media sort of idea of hackers. He was, like, confusing people pretending to be the fictional representation of the real hackers. That's like a three-level reality dysfunction. That's like confusing the Bill of Rights, not just with its fictional representation, right? But for people who cosplay as the fictional representation. So that's, that's like a profound set of errors for our law enforcement to make, okay? And why, why do I raise this, right? Well, because if people are looking for hackers in San Francisco and, you know, use the kind of systems, the, the scary CSI stuff that, 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 um, that, that, that law enforcement do, they will find you. And um, uh, you may not be used to being sort of a, a, a minority that law enforcement, you know, treats with automatic suspicion, like, you know, a persecuted minority or a member of an evil secret society that's trying to take over the world, right? Or, or both, because if you're a member of a secret society that's actually a majority, 
you don't have to take over the world. That's that's just democracy. Um, so, um, and, and this kind of confusion continues. Hackers are essentially a group of people who are at risk from law enforcement getting the wrong idea about what you do. How? How could they make that mistake in this place, right? Uh, this, is, this, is a, this is an EFF case that we had to fight where um, somebody's uh, computers were actually seized because they were using an operating system that had a black screen with a white font that he uses prompt commands on. Right? So that's clearly trying to hide his illegal activities. This was a Boston student who had, had his equipment seized because of that. We fought and overturned over, over that warrant. But people get stuff seized for this, and people make this kind of mistake all the time. And you have to understand that if you are a hacker, or you're in a hacker space, this is going to happen. We want to protect everybody's um, rights, but the sort of cases we frequently find are cases like this. You need to know what your rights are, and you need to know what to do in those situations. So will I tell you? Hell no. Um, because I'm not a lawyer. Um, okay, that came in from the other slide. But um, uh, I do know some people who do, who are. And um, on November the 30th, 7 p.m., here, Monday after next, Jennifer Braddock, who is a god, a god amongst hacker lawyers. She defended Mike Lynn, Chris Warren, well, you can read them, right? She did the DMCA, you can read it. Anyway, um, and check out our Coders Right project, give us lots of money. Come here, November the 30th, 7 p.m., and she will answer questions about hackers, hacker spaces and the law, and what to do um, when the bio fridge goes up. So, thank you very much.